Gentlemen and those who are coming to us from Facebook.com, it's Sunday, it's 5 p.m. and it's Jamaicans.com. Welcome to another edition of Bar Talk. Today I'm so excited because we have two gentlemen here that you need to hear from. First of all, we have on my on my right um, one and only attorney who has done. I'll tell you a little bit more about him as we go on, but he has done so much for our community. Uh, attorney Samuel Yeboa. Yeboa, I should say. Let me get it right. Yeboa. Is that correct? That's correct. That's okay. Perfect. And then uh, moving to my left, uh, he, he is the mayor of the city that I live in. Uh, he is a gentleman that I've watched from the days. He probably didn't even know that I did uh, stuff with SFMS DC when you were doing those, getting those awards back then. <laughs> a wonderful person. Now, you'll talk to you a little bit more. His name, of course, is none other than. Uh, Mayor Wayne Messam. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Bar Talk. Bar Talk is brought to you by Moment to Remember Studio here in Sunrise, Florida. We do all things photo and video. So from your passport picture to your next major event, photo, video, and print, we do that. Now, Bar Talk comes to you from Jamaicans.com also, hosted by Jamaicans.com. In my opinion, it's the leading platform for all things Jamaican and beyond that Caribbean uh, stories. If you want to find us, check us out on Facebook. That's www.com forward slash face uh, forward slash one of Jamaica. Let me say that again. It's www.com facebook.com or www.com. Let that's, I, I see people shaking their head at me, so let me try, let, 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 let me try that once more. It's www.facebook.com forward slash, and it's One Love Jamaica. Awesome. So, hey, listen, the topic this evening is we're more alike than different, bridging the black divide. And I'll explain a little bit of, of, of more about that, but let's just try some housekeeping before. Um, you know you're watching this. We've had last week people um, watching this from China. We have people from different parts of Africa. We have, had, we have even had people f um, from Russia or you call it, whichever you want to call it, that side of the world. We have had people of, of, oftentimes from Canada, have a lot of school friends from England and uh, all, all over the world. So guess what? We like to know that you join us. So guess what we want you to do? Just text and say hi, say hi to Mira Messam, say hi to Sam Yeboah, say hi to me if you like to, <laughs> okay? And just tell us where you're calling from. And as always, tell us what you're happy about today. Um, so, one of the things I'd like to do before we get back to the uh, topic is just to get to know a little bit about our, our, our guests, okay? Um, Samuel, Attorney Samuel Yeboah, I have known him for a while. And to be honest with you, he's from Ghana. But guess what? When I met the brother first, I thought he was Jamaican. I saw him in Lauder Hill. I saw him by uh, Florida Medical. I saw him doing lectures on, I think there was a time when there was some, a kid got killed from being thrown from a car from, um, but by having an incorrect um, car seat, seat, party, yeah. car seat, and he made sure to come into the community. It doesn't matter whether or not he was from Ghana or from Russia, for that matter. He saw a need, and he had a workshop, and he created this thing, and he gave away, I, I, I think, at least fifty car seats to people, and made sure that he had workshop with the city of Lord Hill, city of Lauderdale Lakes, which are predominantly, don't get me wrong, uh, Jamaican community. So for those of you who are listening, say, hey, he's, uh, he's from Ghana, Jamaica. He's making a contri contribution to our community. So I just want to turn it first and foremost to you, Sam, and say hi again to Jamaicans.com. This is your first visit, Jamaicans.com? That's correct. Okay. This is my first visit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm an attorney here in Broward County. It's where my office is, but I, my office operates um, in the Tri-County area, which includes uh, Broward, Dade, Palm Beach primarily. But we also handle cases throughout South Florida. And I'm also a business owner that does other things besides the law. You know, So I, I just think it's really important um, what I've tried to do through my business and on my own other endeavors is try to give back to the community. And that's what the event that you were discussing was all about. So 
to me, that's a big part of what makes me, um, you know, I guess that's a big part of what I like to do in South Florida. Awesome. So let me ask you a question because Jamaicans.com like to get to know people. So when you're not in that office, what's, what's your, again, I, I may have missed it because I'm looking at my phone. Talk to me. What aspect of law do you deal with? What's your specialty? My specialty, that's a good question. My specialty is um, personal injury, primarily. That's what I do, um, which includes medical malpractice, wrongful death cases, catastrophic injuries. I mean, catastrophic things that have happened in people's lives where they need representation, someone to help them navigate the legal landscape, and that's what we do. But we also do some discrimination cases, depending on what kind of case it is. And we handle some business litigation matters, some complex specific types of business matters we handle as well. So that's the general um, scope of my practice. Awesome, awesome. So folks, with all that's going on, first of all, you know somebody you can call on if you ever have a need for that. But Sam, we like to get into a little bit more of um, your personality. So for example, when you're not trying cases or litigating all that kind of stuff, what do you like to do? What's your sports of choice? Oh, football. I think I should. Uh, let me ask you, is it football <laughs> as in soccer or football as in American football, if you should put it that way? Because there's a distinction in the Caribbean. Yeah. Foot, right, 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 Of course. Of course. Of course. There's a distinction between football and soccer. So which is it? I should know better. You know, <laughs> um, just because of my family, you know, Africa and um, black stars. and But um, American football. That's American one thing that I do share with um Mayor Messam. Um, I played football um, in college, and that's the sport that I, you know, gravitate towards. I like all types of American sports, but that's the main one that Running I'm back. the most familiar with. Running back? No, wide receiver. Good <laughs> <laughs> question. Good question. Um, second thing with that, as far as food, what, what, it, it, what, what does attorney Samuel Yuboa likes to eat when he's not? Uh, litigating and he's doing all that kind. When he's out of the office, when he, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, we call it soul food. Uh -huh. What would be your soul food be? Oh wow, some good cornbread. Remember, I grew up in North Carolina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so some good cornbread, beef ribs, some fried chicken, you uh -huh. know, uh, macaroni and cheese. You know, just some of the very common historical historic black food here in the u.s mm -hmm. but i also love jamaican food that's probably why you saw me in the jamaican community ah i do like oxtails and you know curry chicken all these different things that are made um in some of these jamaican restaurants which remind me a little bit of what my mother used to make you know being from an african family you know so some of those dishes are very hold similar. on to that a little bit because that's the direction we're going okay. all right <laughs> and i'll move on all right so okay let's check our our um let me make sure and I'm doing the very thing I said we shouldn't do, right? <laughs> um, so we, we, we have uh, Letha Hall from Kentucky. We have Maxine Plummer is, oh, look, I love the hard artwork. Yes, the artwork this evening, we took them down. I like to display artwork from other folks. So uh, this is Colin Smith. He's part of the Jamaica folklore. Uh, Reminder the name, folks. Maxine, you probably want to remind me of that name because uh, Miss Lou is doing a lot of things. We, the, the, the society is doing a lot of things to commemorate Miss Lou for folklore in Jamaica. And he is one of the members who is very active. And this is his artwork. And there's a, the Aki behind him is from his daughter. So um, we just want to say thank you for reminding me, Maxine. Pauline Carlton is from, calling from Tennessee. Joy Richardson is calling from Bermuda. Uh, we have Angela Augusta. Hello, gentlemen, coming to you from New Jersey. Samuel, your boy, watch it. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Garris is calling from at ATL. Okay, so we're moving right back to Mir Messum. Um, like I said, I've watched you over the years, probably about 10 or so years. I remember when I started shooting with David Muir with the air, uh, SFMSCC. There's a, there's a, that's a thing to roll off my yes. thumb. And I remember you were one of the persons who were on there at that time. And I was, black, I was so glad to see a young black man with his wife who were doing things in the community. And then I realized, hey, he's actually Jamaican. <laughs> you know? And um, then I watched through some of your... Um, the ads that you had about your upbringing, so forth, and we'll touch on that a little bit. But just give us an introduction to yourself. Well, I'm Wayne Messam. I'm the mayor of Miramar, Florida. 
Uh, proud uh, resident for 20 years now. I grew up um, right off the shores of Lake Okeechobee in a small community called South Bay, Florida, uh, right next to Belle Glade, Florida. First of my parents' children born here in the United States, and my parents hail from Manchester, Jamaica. Ah, mm -hmm. so somebody in Manchester said, yeah, I know that man, I know the family. <laughs> okay, so Mayor Messam, we already, um, Sam already, uh, as Jamaicans would say, let the puss out of the back. <laughs> <laughs> so we know you like football. When, when you're not doing football, what are you doing? Wow. What Other I, than the politics and all that. I mean, right now, now or growing up or when? Uh, are we talking right now? Right now, right now. Right now, um, when I'm not, well, I'm not playing football. For, it's been some time now. I'm what would be considered an old guy right now you, in yeah, my you 40s. You play for? So, for Florida State University yes. and briefly with the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh! Yes. So. Yeah, I don't know how many people don't know that. Yes. Um, have you ever been interviewed on Jamaicans.com? Um, written, not on the show. Show. Yes. So there are people who didn't know stuff like that, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's yes, my team, yes, Mark. Yes. No one didn't quit. <laughs> that's not their team. But that's not. Anything but yeah. else? Well, but to answer your question, what I do now, since I'm too old to play American football, um, uh -huh. I'm an avid runner. So I, I wake up very early in the morning. I have a run club, and um, we um, typically try to reach a goal of running a thousand miles a year and um, so it's, it's fun it's challenging yeah and uh, but running is my refuge right now oh I see yes um, wow I need to get back to something <laughs> so, uh, folks just let you know that um, this that we're doing here is not done by yours truly solo we have a team in the room and sometimes I forget to mention them but first of all I would just like to remember that this is brought to you on jamaicans.com. So you can find us at www.facebook.com forward slash one love Jamaica. But I could not do this by myself. We have a team. And so I guess I, like I say all the time, I am the designated guy to walk the plank. <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. But we have a team in here uh, on cam on Roman cameras. We have Julia Stedman. Uh, we have. On, on the switcher uh, or on, on Wirecast is uh, the lady who is supposed to be on the witness protection plan, mm -hmm. but I'm just gonna call her up. That is Paula Jacobs is on. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, she doesn't like to be called out, so I'm just, just doing that. And my brother who runs like, uh, uh, is, is like, he, 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 he drives shotgun with me every week on the switcher is Kevin Stew from Kevin Stew on the Night Shift. Except KevinStew.com. He has his own program called Kevin Stew on the Night Shift or the Night Shift with Kevin Stew. And of course, in the audience, we always have Joan who makes sure she give us the critique. She is she was the president of the Jamaica Nurse Association of Florida. Now she's the vice president of the Jamaica Association of Florida. She's the one who does the checks and balance of the show, uh, Joan Howard. And of course, we always have in the house, um, first of all, let me do one before I get in trouble. Now you're the boss first. But you're the boss first. Bridget Edwards is in the house. <laughs> Followed by the, 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 the lesser of the, 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 of the family, not necessarily lesser wow. of the man, uh, by Eddie Edwards, who is always on hand to make sure that we are, you know, doing what we need to do. So once again, um, and of course, let me go. So we have Michael Tucker is, whoa, he says we're on fire. Uh, Lo, uh, Lotha Hall from Kentucky. We have, okay, we have George A. Rogers from Alberta, Canada, and he, uh, George puts up the Jamaican side. Love it. Uh, Pauline Carlton is called from Tennessee. We have we have that already. We have uh, from Atlanta, Maxine. We have Maxine. The artist done by Colin Smith's granddaughter. She's making sure that I know that. Thank you. <laughs> Judith Oliver Wolf. Good afternoon. Respect everyone. And she tell us where you're calling from. And ZZ Palmer Lewis, greetings, gentlemen, Maryland, in the hall, in, in, in the bar. <laughs> so that's good. Um, Donna Reed, good afternoon, Mayor Messa. So nice to have met you in Broward College. Such a such humility, and uh, and us Mantigonians, what are this? I can't get that one. Maybe you can figure that out. And Tammy Green is watching. <laughs> You know, have you seen it? The, 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 the Mantigonians? Oh, Mantigonians? Okay. Okay. You're, okay. 
From Good. Antigua. From Antigua. Oh Lord. I'm, I'm, just, on, I'm just I'm just as bad. <laughs> we're, right? we're taking your Jamaican car. You're Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal, folks. Um, there's a lot that is being said currently about um, Black Lives Matter. And sure, we do matter. Um, and we all, we all know that. Oh, well, today we're going to touch a topic that's a somewhat sensitive, because sometimes people don't even want to exist that, that, that to admit that it does exist. As a black folks, we tend to sometimes to to segregate or to even discriminate <laughs> against our own. And so one of the things I, I'll give you three examples real quickly. One is of. Um, the lady who is at the airport and she's checking and she kind of brown skin like a little bit like Juliet Stedman. Um, and so she right. <laughs> right? She pulls up to the, 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 the immigration when she landed here in the US and she the guy said to her, oh, you didn't check your rates. And she put other. And so when she was asked, she says, well, my great grandfather came from Scotland or Ireland or something like that. My great grandfather, my mother's side came from Cuba, some must be other. And the guy looked at him, laughed, and he didn't care much. He just scratched that out, and he checked black. <laughs> no, right? And so that's one of the things. A second thing is that I, I have a friend of mine, and I'll, I'll say it out loud. She likes to boast about the fact that she attends a white church. And that white people do things. Oh, is that not a church painted white? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a white church that, no, Kevin. It's a, it's, 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 it's a church that attended by a lot of white folks. And I tried to let her know by the very fact, and nothing against white folks, love you all, uh, but when you start to do that, you are kind of, in my opinion, and guys correct me if I'm wrong, you kind of getting a slap to us, the, the black church. And then the last thing I have of is that people, I even spoke to somebody today, and there's a thing about, well, where you come from. If you come from Jamaica, you're a hard worker. If you're a black American, you may not necessarily be a hard worker. I'm like, how do you get that? Mm -hmm. um, if you are from, for example, um, Nigeria, and you introduce the guy to your mom, no matter how good he looks or whatever, you, your mom might think he's a scammer. These are the labels we put on people. And so oftentimes, there's a last one I have where and you guys probably hear it before. Um, I don't do, uh, I, I don't do um, business with black people because black people don't know how to do business. And I'm looking at Mayor Messon from way back doing his thing and you have his company. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at all these folks. And I'm thinking, if we do that, are we actually doing a black divide? And that's the name of the show. Um, we are more alike than we're different. Bridging the Black Divide. Mayor Messam, want to take that away? Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction. Well, there, there is definitely a Black Divide. And I know that the audience is an international audience yes. and, and individuals from across America that are watching um, right now. And in some areas of the country, um, the, the, the dynamics and demographics are more, I would say, simplistic, where it's whites, blacks, and maybe the uh, Latino community. But when you take a community or a region like South Florida, New York, um, some of the, 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 the points where a lot of Caribbean people may gravitate to when they leave on their native island. But here in South Florida, um, you have so many, so many diasporas, whether it's from Jamaica, Haiti, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, or from the motherland. Mm -hmm. are here. But at the end of the day, when we're dealing with, I guess, racism in America, other cultures see all of us as black. Of course, yes. So the, in terms of the internal divide, you know, with all these perceptions, um, I think I, well, I have a unique perspective because I grew up in a very Jamaican household mm -hmm. in the heart of an African-American community. So I grew up pretty much bicultured. I know the African-American experience because that was my experience growing up outside of the house. American. But inside of the house, I had a very Jamaican, Jamaican household. So with all the, the traditions, the culture, so I see both sides. So I was prejudiced against by African-Americans because we were the Jamaican household on my <laughs> block, right? And my parents spoke with an accent that they didn't necessarily identify with. 
you know, so so I, I understand on, on, on both sides. But this black divide is that we it, it, it shows that there is a lack of education. We don't understand one another. We don't have an appreciation for our uniqueness. And it is a residual circumstance of us being descendants of slaves, where it was institutionalized. We were ripped from our culture, all traditions, names, and we were taught to be against one another because of that. Yes. So, and then um, you have the, the whole dynamics of descendants from slaves from in the Caribbean once got once they got their independence it's basically black people took over that island like in jamaica it wasn't like here in the united states where emancipation passed whites were still in control there were jim crow laws systemic institutional racisms and policies where black people into into a to to a sense are still prejudiced against and you have to have an understanding. So until the black love understands each other's experience and walk, we won't love each other. And when you don't love each other and don't have that respect for one another, then how are you going to do business with one another? How are you going to build capacity with one another? So I think it really starts at the root. You have to understand the root cause before we can come together as a people. I, I like to challenge you a little bit because I want to, now you challenge you to, to because in terms of the American dream, uh, I think people need to sometimes celebrate what is, uh, I, I think, cultures will come together and make it happen. For example, uh, tell us a little bit about your dad and your upbringing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I've heard it before, and it's, it's a really moving story. And for people uh, from the Jamaican perspective, Jamaicans.com, people don't know that side of your bringing, they see the football player, they see the Mayor Miramar. Talk to me about the early upbringing in Belgrade. Well, you know, uh, many of the viewers may have relatives, an uncle, or maybe their own father or grandparents. My dad. Okay. Farm who, work program. Who <laughs> left, left Jamaica, yes. uh, left Jamaica on contract. Yes. You know, he was a contract yes. sugarcane yes. cutter. He cut sugarcane for well over a decade um, here in, in South Florida. Um, he once he stopped cutting sugar cane, he uh, became a, a permanent resident here and, and settled in the very area in South Florida where I grew up, where he used to cut um, sugar cane. But I know he came here to support his family yes. chasing opportunity, which we all see as the American dream. Um, he always felt that uh, no matter how, no matter what your circumstances, if you work for it, you get education, um, you work hard. You can be whoever you want to be here in this country, and that's what he instilled um, in, in, in me. You know, um, I'm sure he understood because at the time when he first started, that was in the civil rights struggle in the, yes. the mid to late '60s when he first started coming on contract. So he saw the news reports, but he still saw opportunity here. So I think all of us are here to some degree of our parents or ourselves coming to the United States chasing the American dream. And wouldn't you think that a little bit of that, though, is why people sometimes think that if they were born here and you come and you take it, it's, it, it, or they think you take it, that, that, that's part of, uh, I, I have a, quite a few, of, um, for the want of a better black term, black mm -hmm. American, mm -hmm. which you are, because <laughs> so you have a unique perspective because you're both that we took that tree. Well, see, then that's the trap we can't fall into. All right, so for example, you know, especially, you know, Jamaicans are very prideful, you know. Um, some people may say we're bossy, right? When we come here, we have a lot of pride, <laughs> we're ambitious, and, and, and want to be very successful. Yep. So, and then that can come off a little brass. Again, you know, when you take a, a, a black person who, when you think about the black experience here from slavery, um, surviving, um, Jim Crow and all of the, the, the racist acts against black people. And then when the African, when Caribbeans or any other black person from um, the diaspora come here without the knowledge or the appreciation of the African American struggle and the experience. Uh, it just comes across in a negative light. And I think that feeds into it from an African-American perspective, looking at other blacks that come here and are benefiting from the blood, sweat, and tears of yes. African-American experience here. 
So when, when, when Jamaicans arrive and when they understand, when they have this, that's why I said the education and the appreciation of the experience, then we can unite because our, 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 we have similar, similar stories yes. in terms of the struggle because Jama our, our, our parents, our, our forefathers and foremothers who were enslaved in Jamaica and other islands, yes. you know, had very similar experiences. So we have to know each other. We have to know each other's history so we can have that love so that we can unite and come together. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to turn it to you because here is where is another touchy point. Um, the African experience for some folks. Um, we have labels and some of the labels that people have is because of their being naive to a lot of things um, African. For example, I, 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 the first time I did a wedding with Ethiopians, I walked away feeling these are some of the most good, best, best looking people I've ever seen. This facial structure, what have you. But then I didn't know anything about them before. Your origin is uh, from, you're from Ghana. Your family's from Ghana, you were you're born in Ghana. Um, what do you see when you when you, when you interact with people? Um, well, I mean, now it's a little bit more seamless. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I can tell you just listening to Messam's story about how it was when he was younger. We had similar type experience, mm -hmm. but it was from the African perspective, mm -hmm. you know, because we grew up in a African American area, you know, um, and that's really what nurtured me. Besides my parents, is mm -hmm. the African American community that has has been responsible for where I am now to a certain extent, you know, but we were different. And whenever you're different, people kind of, if they don't understand, you know, yes. they may say things sometimes that um, to us would sound ignorant, you know, like, I mean, believe it or not, when I was younger, people would ask questions like, you know, did you guys live in houses? No. You know, you know, because, no, seriously, <laughs> yeah. some people didn't know, yeah. you know, most people that are educated know better, yeah. you know, but for folks that didn't know anything, didn't know anything about their own history or their origin, you know, Africa is some dark place where nothing happened until slavery happened. Mm -hmm. They had no history, they had no kingdoms, they had no, you know, science or any of these things, which is all wrong, of course. But a lot of people, you know, back then didn't know that. You know, the kids that I ran around with, part of it because of age, you know, they're young, we're, young, we're all young, you know, I'm talking five, six, seven, eight years old, you know. So, I mean, back then people would make fun of us. You know, some folks would. You know, people that didn't know, you know, like, well, how come your mother sounds funny? Or, you know, how come you guys don't, you know, talk the same way or certain things like that? Um, so you get a little bit of that, too. But he touched on a lot of that. So I'm not going to go deep into that. But one of the things I do want to comment about is when I talk to people that are from Africa and other places that come here and then they have a view of black Americans and sometimes it's negative, like, hey, you've been here, you've got this opportunity, how come you can't do X, Y, or Z? You know, I always try to talk to those people and explain to them, you know, you shouldn't judge someone until you've walked in their shoes, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm glad you, you, you said, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm glad you said that because one of the, 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 the revolving thought is, uh, and, and, and sometimes even black Americans say that, that when they come, we come here and we, we snatch opportunities. Mm -hmm. it, 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 is it that you look for it or is, or is it, I, I, I don't want to touch so much on because it, it's a sensitive issue with some folks because it becomes, well, um, they have it and they didn't use it, but we have, we come and we see it and we use it. Um, is that an issue that prevails? I mean, it, that you saw people saying to you? Um, not really. I mean, I didn't have that experience um, myself, so I can't really say that. And to a certain extent, I see that as a false narrative. Mm -hmm. There's enough opportunity for everybody. Yeah. Yes. You know, there's no reason for, you know, a lot of times the people at the top pit the people at the bottom against each other. That's kind of yeah. how things are done. So that wow. way you're not looking at what they're doing to everybody. You know, that happens even across races. You're too busy worrying about welfare queens or this person getting that or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're not worrying about the person at the top that's taking advantage of everybody. You know, so to a certain extent, I don't accept that framing of it. You know, personally, I believe that there's plenty of opportunities and a lot of times people that think along those lines, that's just a, um, a product of ignorance. That's mm -hmm. really all it is. Wow. You know, um, the pie can be expanded. It's big enough for everybody. You don't have to worry about what your neighbor has and that somehow that means you're not getting X. You know, that's just to me, ignorance. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I just want to touch on a couple of people who are calling in. Uh, hi, Evadne, um, uh, Denise Evadne, she's saying, hi guys, hello. And then she says, little known fact about Mayor Messam. I don't know what that is. Donna read some people from... <laughs> Oh, Donna Reed is on my case. She says, hey, people from Manchester are called Manchester Gonian. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I may be in trouble. <laughs> <My Yes. Gonians. laughs> yes. Montego okay, what Manchugonians. Uh vaccine pump plumber. Really? There is a legacy of slavery, the house slave versus the field. Ah. And so I guess that's coming from, from that period of time where we, we were, like you said, deliberately divided yes. from, from, from the get-go. Yes. Because if you were a Brakamasa house, you are the good, the good slave. Yes. <laughs> and the person who is in the field, I guess, is the, the, the other slave. But at the same time, in Brakamasa head, we're still black. Yeah. And I mean, if there's a, there's a, I think that's a very solid point, Maxine, because regardless of how they see us, how we think we are, and it's the same revolving thought. No matter how we think we are and who we come from where, we're still seen by, I hate to use the term again, but that's the term I know, Bakramasa. Mm -hmm. We're still seen as, as black. Uh, well, then we have Mark. Mark says, that's also often true of whites, whether they are from Italy, England, uh, Germany, Poland, Russia, uh, I guess he's saying it's the same. So he's talking about it from an immigrant experience yeah all right um zz plumber says you're talking true truth uh mayor <laughs> so that's it angela messam is watching angela okay um let's go down to terrence you know, rosemary Garrison. rule on moments to remember, on, on moment to remember. Go ahead. saying you know great points and uh, yes mayor mutual love and respect are fundamentally important so Big ups to those on Moments to Remember also. Yes, we could. we're streaming on my, my site as well as Jamaicans.com. So okay. people are coming from both ways. And then after we share this, as you guys know, we share this to all the social groups afterwards. So you'll look out for this. Um, Angelo, okay. Maxine, Judy Brown is watching. Hey, Judy, how are you doing? And Jackie Clark, Clark is watching from London. Okay. Um, where do we, we, we picked up, we left on... The fact that you were that we we divided in terms of from yes. the get go, yes. right? Anything you'd like to add to that? Well, I you know we can spend a lot of time talking about the various differences uh, between the, the African diaspora, um, but if you're here in the United States, I think um, it's important upon us first for us to learn as much about one another as possible, because the more you know about someone, then the, it just bridges that gap. Um, of the unknowns, as you mentioned before, like in, in my household growing up, you know, we were different than everyone else, you know, and in your household in, in, in North Carolina, you were different. Um, but the more we know about each other, then the, it bridges that gap. But if you're here in the, in the United States, it's important for us to understand what does it take to be successful here in uh -huh. the United States. And you have to know the black experience here in the United States. Um, and when we can join together to build real institutions. So for example, how many of you bank with a black bank? I mean, there was no okay. the black bank. <laughs> Do you know the black banks, right? Okay, the Jewish community is very intentional mm -hmm. about their culture. They're very intentional about their business. They're yes. very intentional about their faith. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. So as the African diaspora here in the United States, which includes the Caribbean diaspora, African Americans that are here, African natives that are here, whatever your black experience and you're here in the United States, we have to unite together. Not to say there's anything wrong with other communities. They're already reaping the benefit of over $300 trillion of black economic spend in this United States. And there is not one intentional goal or plan as blacks in this country. So we must learn more about each other. We must forge relationships with each other 
Otherwise, we will not be able to control our destiny here in this country because we won't have the political capital, we won't have the financial capital, and we will not have the community capital to be able to operate in this diaspora on issues that are important to us. Right. Yeah, I agree whole, wholeheartedly. You know, I mean, I, I think what this, this program is about, you know, what divides us to a certain extent, but what unites us is so much stronger. Yes. You know, we have a common origin, a common history, even if some of our history goes through the islands or, you know, wherever, but we all come from, we originate from one place, you know, so that commonality is important. We also have a common current experience. You know, you see some of these things about Black Lives Matter. One thing I can tell you is what happened to George Floyd? They didn't stop to ask him if he was Jamaican. Yeah. They didn't stop right. to ask him if he was Haitian. That's right. They didn't stop to ask him if he was 50% black or not, you know? <laughs> what they saw was a black person. So when people want to say things like, hey, listen, I'm from this island or I'm from the motherland uh, yeah. or, you know, I'm, you know, I got at least one Irish relative or whatever. I mean, when people see you, they see the same thing. You may look different, but in terms of America, how they see race, you know, whether you have 100% black blood or you have 50%. You know, we have the same common treatment that we get. You know, everybody knows somebody who's suffered something or been discriminated against or who's been stopped or something along those lines. The other thing is, besides a common history, in terms of common condition now, we also have a common future to a certain extent because if we don't improve things, that's gonna impact all of us. Even if you think, you know, hey, listen, I've gotten to a certain economic level, it doesn't really affect me to the same extent. I mean, that's, that's really not the way things work because it's gonna affect your project. You know, it's gonna affect the people you care about. It's gonna affect you if a person pulls you over doesn't know who you are. So in essence, we're tied through history into the future. We have a lot of commonalities that we can't ignore, so we must work together because that's what's gonna benefit all of us, individually and as a group. From a practical point of view, you own a, 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 a law firm and there is still that some people have this, and again, I say some people have this stigma not doing um, business with a black firm. Um, have you experienced that? Or that is some people, I'm talking, <laughs> let, let me go even deeper. I'm talking about black folks that want to do it business with black folks because for whatever reason they claim. Have you experienced that? Absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about, you know? And it's funny because coming from North Carolina, which is where I, you know, I did my school and where I grew up, I didn't hear that as much. But when I got, because it's a, it's a more, you have a little less diversity in the black community where I grew up. So we, were, we saw each other all as black, you know? When I came here, it's a little bit different. I hadn't heard the term, you need to get you an X type of lawyer, you know? I Meaning somebody mm -hmm. who's not black. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, you know, talk about specific groups. But I had never heard that before. You know, wow. so it's, um, and I started practicing law in North Carolina first. Not saying that it doesn't happen, but not with the prevalence that it did here. You know, so to a certain extent, I've had to educate people um, from, you know, some folks saying, hey, well, I don't know if I want to hire you. Most people don't do that, but some people you occasionally will encounter that because they're not used, at least in their minds, to being able to deal with a black person that has the intellect to be able to handle things at a certain level. You know, because they don't, some people don't think that you're going to be able to do it as well as somebody who doesn't look like you, or you're not going to have the same clout with a particular judge or whatever the situation is, just different wow. reasons for it. But the thing is, ultimately, I don't care what, what um, profession you're in, you know, what you have to understand is if you want economic opportunity for yourself, you want economic opportunity for your kids and the people in your communities, you have to build up the businesses in your community. Because those are the people that are more likely to hire you. That's right. Yes. They're the ones that are more likely to give you an opportunity. You know, um, a lot of times when you go into a business, look around and see what you see at that business. You know, in terms of the people that are providing those services to you. You know, um, so it is it, disturbing to a certain extent. I have not encountered that as much lately. You know, because I think I've done some things to put myself out there yes. more. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do know it exists, you know, and I hear that from some of the younger attorneys, too, that I encounter. Um, but it's a problem. You know, I, I feel we, we have to be and recognizing all the points that you made. We have to be intentional as a people. Because for every dollar we don't spend in our own community, it goes to build another community. P 
period. It mm-hmm. is as simple as that. Wow. And my private life, you know, being a general contractor and, and I'm in a very white dominated industry in terms of construction management, right? And it's very hard for black trade contractors like your electricians, your plumbers, your HVAC contractors to get contracts with these very large companies That's because right. of good old boy network. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes. as a general contractor ourselves, we're doing work throughout South Florida with public entities. We have to go beyond the normal to ensure that we are contracting with black, tra- um, black trade contractors we recognize that because of their lack of exposure, lack of opportunity, they may not have all of the resources as their majority peers, but they're just as qualified, they're just as experienced, and in most cases, can do a better job. We as black people have to get out of this syndrome that the other people's ice is colder than our ice. Thank you, thank right? you, thank we you. We have to do that. We'll wait an hour and a half well, before coronavirus, at Cheesecake (laughs) Factory, we'll wait an hour and a half to get a table. Yes. But if you go to the Jamaican restaurant or the soul food restaurant, and they make you wait 15 minutes, you're ready to get up and leave to go somewhere else to only wait for an hour to go to their restaurant. I never thought of it like that way, but that's so true, because we'll sit there and we will humbly wait to get a table. Wow. Yeah. So until we have to, we, so we have to be intentional about that because as a general contractor, I'm only as good, we're only as good as a company as our trade subcontractors. So I want to make sure that I can help build as many subcontractors. So as I grow and take on larger projects with more risk, that I'm working with the same good black subcontractors along with others but I need to have a good amount of black trade contractors because I know that that black sub trade contractor is gonna hire John John and Ray Ray in the neighborhood, right? Wow. Who won't get a job, right? They're going to give and donate to their community church. They're going to go and patronize other businesses in our communities that these other subcontractors who don't live in the community are going to support wherever they live. It's nothing good or bad about it. It's just that we have to understand the economics of this and we have to be very intentional. Now, as the mayor dealing with public funds, I can't be as direct Mm -hmm. on the private side, all right? But I can help shape the policies. For example, in the city of Miramar, we've done a disparity study that shows that black contractors aren't getting their fair share. So we're working our process right now to implement an MWE program, but we're going about it the legal and the right way to be able to cure these disparities. So as an elected official, I have to look to see what barriers or institutional barriers that have been in place for generations that prevent the black community and other minority groups from being able to participate in the public process. Because last I checked, Black people are paying just as many, I mean, just as much taxes as everybody else, but all the tax dollars is not going to every community, as we know. So then, um, how do you? Uh, because regardless of you're saying, and 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 that's and that's as solid as it gets. But there's a young lady or a young man is all start saying that well okay but when i give my business to a black business i don't get the same job i don't get the same results or what of you how do you, how do we educate how do we um bring everybody then to the same level or is it purely a perception well i think it's a little of both all right first of all if you're in business you need to be a good businessman or woman and provide a good product or service that's the bottom line yes all right but if let's say for example the restaurant business no one will cook jerk chicken jerk pork kalalut akian sausage (laughs) better than your parents yes so don't expect to get mom and dad's dish at a restaurant, right? Yes. But come on, if you're gonna go to Cheesecake Factory and spend $80 a person 
for yes. a yes. meal. Yes. yes. And you go to a soul food restaurant, a Caribbean restaurant. You complain about And yes. let anything costs more than $20. <laughs> yes. 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 It's yes. too expensive. Yes. It's, and that's what I'm talking about. So if oh, you were no, spending no, no, no. $80 per meal per person at our neighborhood restaurants, then they can have the granite countertops. They can have the white glove service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They can, the minute you sit down, they can give you bread and some um, sparkling water and white water as you wait yeah. for, for your meal. <laughs> yeah. but, they they can, but they can't do that off a $10 lunch special that you're only willing to spend in our communities and only will spend $100 in the other person's community. Yeah. So you can't have your, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Sam, your take. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly with, with what he said. I think to a certain extent, you can't divorce one from the other. You know, one fees, I mean, obviously the more um, minority businesses you hire in whatever industry, the more people that are gonna go into that industry to provide those services, you know? So it's kind of like, it's, it goes hand in hand mm -hmm. to a certain extent. And I think, you know, yeah, businesses do have a responsibility. And I feel that a lot myself whenever you take on you know, a case and you're handling somebody's, um, you know, settlement or whatever, that you want to make sure that that person is going to be an ambassador, not only for you because of what you did for them and the way you connected with them in ways maybe other people can't, you know, that they're going to look at the next black business and say, hey, you know, I had a good experience with Messam, I had a good experience with Yaboa, or I had a good experience with, with you, mm -hmm. for example, then they're going to be more open. So there's responsibility on both sides. That I do agree with, you know, so. And James Herity says, yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Yaboa is a great attorney. I've seen great attorneys uh, of all ethnic background, and he has a, he's excellent, he has an excellent point. <laughs> so there's somebody there. Ciroy, the entertainer, is watching. Silver Brown, there needs to be a list of black contractors. Is there such a thing? Yes, there is. Uh, many of the, there are some private listings, um, but for example, most um, county governments, school districts, their supplier vendor lists um, will list by um, racial demographic oh. and gender demographic. Um, the black companies, Hispanic companies, women-owned businesses as well. So wow. there are some. So Sylvia, please understand, Sylvia Brown, uh, there is in certain many of the government agencies. So next time you're looking for a contractor, I'm just going to suggest <laughs> you look under the... And what I, I would also things. add too is yes. that in most, in most metropolitan areas, uh, you have black chambers of commerce. You have the Broward Black Chamber yes. of Commerce. You have the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. So there, there are many black chamber of commerces um, throughout, throughout the country. So um, that's where you can find a list of, of black businesses. Yeah, which I think is important when he uses the word intentional. You may have to do a little bit more to find a qualified black person to be able to do certain, provide certain services. But, I mean, you have a vested interest in doing so. So even if it takes you a little bit more, you know, clicks on Google or calling some folks or calling your local chamber, or like even with um, these doctors, there's black associations, like the lawyers, they have Caribbean Bar Association. Yes. I mean, if you're intentional about it, that's why that word he uses is so important. Yes. You can find what you're looking for, Yes. you know, um, but you have to be invested in it to the same extent, you know, um, and I don't think you can afford not to be. But here's the funny thing. I'm glad you said that because South Florida is considered a melting pot. And one of the things that we have happen is that different cultures have different notions about what's black or who is black. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, Carolyn Crawford Morgan says, and Dominicans and some others don't see themselves as black, not even if they're blue black. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you integrate people like that lady on the plane who just wanted to know she she is it's almost like to say you're black but it is it, it's an issue. She said something and I don't think it's all Dominican Republic but the people but I know for ex and I don't want to call some other nations I know because I've been to a couple of them who even though the skin is just like mine they don't want to take on that heading, you know, as being black. How do we integrate people like this in trying to create that, uh, to try to bridge the black divide? But that's why I preface my earlier comments with, um, with the notion that we're talking about living here in the United States. But they do as live in, here though, uh, they do live I, here. So living here in the United States, mm -hmm. we don't have the luxury 
to <laughs> we don't have the like luxury. That. We don't the have luxury. the luxury to dissect blackness. Ah. Oh. Because the majority community sees your complexion and you're black, regardless. Now, within the black community, regardless of your origin, there is nothing wrong with having self-pride. There's nothing wrong with having pride for your culture and where you were born and where you are from. That's the uniqueness of our experience and what we have. But we must have the capacity to appreciate the cultures of others within the black, black. diaspora, knowing that the overarching prevail should be that we are one as it relates to being here in this country. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's, and just, oh, just before you go, okay. Sam, uh, and then Elsa Rose just somebody said so true. Angela Augusta say that is true uh, to the max. <laughs> so she's agreed with you. And Sylvia Brown, I live in in the Virgi uh, in Virginia. Althea Mendez um, is watching. Iris Jones. Um, as a black sister, I'm enjoying listening to our black brothers. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that up. You know? so, but what I, I just wanted to add on to what he said, I think a big part of it is, is history. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the advantages that I had coming up in the communities that I grew up in that separated me from the other folks that I was running around with doing the same things with, you know, getting in trouble with and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But my path took a very different road than theirs did to a certain extent. I mean, to know who you are, you have to know where you come from. Yeah. Period. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think the school system, I mean, I've not been in, you know, the uh, high school, or whatever, in a while, obviously, but I don't think the school system, when I came up, did a good job of educating you about your history as a black person. They taught you someone else's history. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you be as invested in, why, why would you be as invested in yours when you don't really know your history? You know? Wow. So to a certain extent, you know, one of the things that I think is important for black parents to do is, you know, you want to give your kids certain books that they may not get to read in school. You know, mis Miseducation of a Negro, for example. Yes. Yes. You want to give them, you know, the autobiography of Malcolm X. You know, you want to give them not just stuff that's U.S. history based, but stuff that talks about the kingdom of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Some people may not have known that or that the early Egyptians were black. You know, yeah. I know that history has been whitewashed a lot. And if you watch TV, which I consider to be propaganda to a certain extent, mm. you don't feel like you have anything to be proud of. Because your history starts from slavery. But that is not true. No. Right. That's not where your history starts from. You want to wow. drop down on one day. You know, you were here, people could argue, one of the first people that were here, period. You know? So some of the science and things that the technology we have nowadays is based on comes out of Egypt. You know, but you have to, if well, you don't know. The Egyptians went yeah. over the Africans and learned. No, no. What, what I'm saying is the Egyptians, Egyptians were, were at, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what I'm getting at. But I mean, of course, that part of of Africa was invaded countless times by different people: the Persians, you know, the Greeks, the the Romans, you know. So things evolved, but they learned things from those people when they went there, you mm -hmm. know. So again, the Greeks if, especially learned yeah. from the Africans. And Precisely. Came like 300 years later and conquered them yeah. and took their history. Yeah, so I, I mean, again, what you think of yourself is very important. And I think education is important. And if Huge. the schools don't do it, it's incumbent on us as parents. Well, I'm not a parent yet, but it's incumbent on parents or even, you know, people that are out in the community that can impact what other kids think of themselves, you know, because. They're going to act based on how they feel about themselves. You know, I mean, all of us know about studies that were done back in the day when they gave, you know, dolls to kids, you know, a black doll and a white doll to yeah. a black kid. And the black kid said the white doll was pretty. Mm -hmm. These are people that don't, aren't old enough to even know who they are yet. Yes. But they've already gotten certain things in their minds. Brainwashed. So you have to start that education process early, wow. you know, because that's what's going to make a difference. What you think of yourself is going to determine what you think you can do. Or what you think you can accomplish. That's why we need our own. Yeah. When you think about many of the, the black experiences that have brought, been brought to the, the mainstream, it's been invested by rich black folks to tell untold stories that Hollywood would yes. not tell, mm -hmm. right? So when we have our own, then we can tell our own experiences because we have a vested interest to ensure that our stories are told and yeah, our history is told. Um, and on the political side, 
Right now, you have so many people right now running for school board. You know, mm -hmm. um, what is their position about teaching Black history ah. into the curriculum? So, if you are voting for these candidates, you need to have a personal discussion with that candidate. If you want my vote, what is your plan to have Black history taught as part of curriculum, not an elective, as part of curriculum? in our school districts. So when I say we need to be intentional, these are the things. So we can march all day. <laughs> we yeah. can be on social media and create all kinds of memes all day. But at the end of the day, when the rubber hits the road, what will be our action? What will be the simple things that we can do? Because it's not impossible. They want your vote. So vote for the people that will do the things that you want to see and then hold them accountable to it. I like that. And you know, something is, that's nothing new because I know one particular community, uh, one um, city, that when you want, when you're, you're going up for election, for example, that, for example, you meet with the rabbis. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. Um, I don't want to call the name of the city, but I know it for a fact because I've been involved in it. And they sit down and they ask you, what are you gonna do for me? <laughs> right, I mean, it's right. not said that way, but in essence, that's what they're talking about. Are you including them? Why are you including in your future these plans? What yeah. we'd like to see: these are houses, these are the parks that we don't want you to build something over. Can you do that? And you can't get their vote unless you do that. Why can't we? I mean, it's, it's leverage, and we are like you said, and everybody know we got the, um, our, our spending power. Is amazing. Why can't we use, like you said, leverage? No. I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm gonna make sure that um, Angela Messam, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's saying one United Bank, Black Home Bank. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> okay, okay. Get them more trouble. Okay, and uh, Angela M M Mendes is watching. Um, Iris Jonas, Allison, you know, Black Sisters is enjoying. Da 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 da. Maxine is say, is online too. Uh, Georgia Goldsmith is watching. Cynthia uh, Vaughn is watching. Good afternoon. Cynthia is calling from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And she's asking a question Is Latino a race? I don't know if it's the scope of the show, but <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 listen, uh, Cynthia, I did uh, ask. Uh, uh, Pamela Scott, uh, also within the black culture, there is what um, I like to call. Uh, colorism. Can you touch on that? Mm. Well, before that, though, no. um, over on moments, mm -hmm. uh, Gillette Davis is saying our people are brainwashed to hate each other, divide and conquer. And um, another Rosemary Rulo saying to the to attorney Sam, you know, great point about those in authority and manipulation. Like you said, education about different cultures is key. And that's one of the things that we're missing you were saying, out yes, you're big saying. time. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, your question, Luke. unfortunately, we are kind of past the time. Oh, wow. we, yes, that quickly. We are past <laughs> the time. So we have to summarize. Um, uh, Mayor, I just, at least let me start with uh, Attorney Sam Yuboa. Talk to me about your current initiatives, what you're doing. Uh, close out that. You're, you're, first of all, give me an idea. Uh, if you should give me a, a closing paragraph for this discussion, what would that be? And any initiatives that you're doing currently, if we need to find you based on what you're doing, where can we find you? So forth. Okay. Um, well, I can be found at uh, yeboalawgroup.com. And since a lot of people don't know how to spell Yeboah, the, <laughs> something else that feeds into my website is 1-800-TELL-SAM.COM. If you type that in, that'll take you right to YeboahLawGroup.com. So that's really easy to remember. But that's the easy way to find me. That's the easy way to find me on Instagram as well, and even on Facebook, 1-800-TELL-SAM. Um, so in terms of initiatives, um, you know, we do have the scholarship we do in the various events that you've been a part of. Yes. Um, we're going to start a foundation that will allow our reach to be a lot further, to be able to do things, because that really is a passion of mine, even more than the practice of law. Just, you know, what's going on in our community specifically is something that, you know, I've thought about and really wanted to be able to do something about 
even before I was in a position to do that, you know. But it's good you're doing things like this. And the reason why I say it's good is because everything we've done dovetails to the, the point that we need to be unified. Yes. You know, for some of the things that Messam talked about before about, you know, exercising political power and all that stuff, you have to come together as a group and work as a collective. If you want a seat at the table, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you got to come together. You don't have a choice, yeah. you know. You can't be frivolous, especially right now where we're at an inflection point where, you know, there's legislators and even Congress talking about what they can do about policing and all that stuff. This is the time to make a difference and to see each other and try to support each other so we can come together and speak with our buying power, you know, speak with our political clout, you know, register to vote. You know, and if you don't know, a lot of people don't vote because, well, you know, the Democrats and the, the Republicans or the, this particular person and that particular person, educate yourself. Figure out what the issues are. How are the schools in your community? Who's who's allowing and you know resources to go into that particular community? Those are the type of things that we need to look to do. But the only way to do that is to come together, not as Jamaicans, to come together, not as Africans mm -hmm. or as Black Americans. We need to come together as Black folks mm -hmm. because we get treated a certain way based on that designation. So that that's really my closing statement. The one thing that I wanted to talk about specifically is we need to come together and make this thing happen. And just remind me and just remind our audience what exactly is your practice, what specifically your, your practice is. Um, I handle personal injury matters, which is basically car accidents, serious injuries like car accidents, uh, medical malpractice, um, other types of injuries, um, business matters, specific discrete business matters and some discrimination cases, depending okay. on what the circumstances are. Awesome. And that's 1-800-TELL-SAM. TELL-SAM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That sounds like a Netflix cover. 1-800-TELL-SAM. <laughs> okay, good. Mayor Messam, take us out. Well, I've, I've thoroughly um, the, enjoyed this discussion. I mean, we may need to have a, a part two because yes. there's so much more um, that, we can, that we can touch on. Um, I think, though, that we can't overcomplicate this. You know, we have to love one another. Uh, we have to be intentional about everything that we do um, and be able to make an influence in the areas where we um, have influence. And everyone has influence of their pocketbook and their wallet. Mm -hmm. So be intentional about your spend. Um, second, our youth. Our youth are so important because our youth are their experience is being diluted even more, they're even more. Um, they, they're coming up with um, a lot of resources, a lot of privileges um, as we advance as a people. Um, they may not necessarily connect with the struggle that we identify with and what our parents identify with, um, so that we're going to have to educate them. Just like I said, other communities, they, uh, they educate their children and they're very intentional about what their expectations should be as it relates to their family, as it relates to their economics, and as it relates to their people. And we have to ensure that we are doing that as, 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 as a community. Uh, but I'll leave with this thought that I spoke about our youth. It is imperative that our youth understand their history. It is imperative that our youth understand finances. Are you talking to your children about credit? Do they know the three credit bureaus here in the United States? Mm. So many of our children go off to college, military or adults, and it's not until after they've taken that credit card, spent what they call free money, and can't pay it back, <laughs> and their credit is shot, and then by the time they mature and want to get their lives on track, they can't buy a car, so when they have to buy a car, it's at the highest rate. They want to buy a home. Even if they make enough money to buy a home, they can't get a loan because of these credit issues. Our finances are so important and in politics. Um, Attorney Sam made such a great point in terms of forming a collective. You know, when you talked about that rabbi in those communities and said, what are you gonna do for me if you want my vote, right? And we always wonder why so many black elected officials vote against their people, <laughs> right? Yes. It's because they're responding to the demands of those who helped get them in office, yes. who contributed to their campaign, who are there to keep them in office. While we sit on the sidelines, mm -hmm. idle, wow. not even having a voice, not even telling them what our demands are. 
and letting them know we're going to support you and we have your back. So when these other communities are trying to force you to make decisions and take votes against our community, you don't have to give in to that pressure because not only are we going to give you our votes, but we're going to give you the dollars that we can give because we have the numbers. We have the collective numbers and a little forms a lot when they're brought together as a collective, as a unit. Right? So as a people, we must be intentional. If no one remembers anything else I said this evening, we have to be intentional about our spend. We have to be intentional about how we educate our youth because they're the future. And we have to be intentional about our politics. Awesome. Folks, I'm going to do, I'm not going to do like what sometimes folks do at church, the pastor preach, and then somebody <laughs> try to finish off the service by re-preaching it. You heard it first. I tell you what, there are so many comments that's coming in. I cannot approach them. So I guess I'm going to ask Sam and Mary. I'm just going to ask you when you have a chance to go in on um, and, and answer some of these or respond to some of these because okay. there, 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 there are tons of them that I have not even touched. Mm -hmm. And we're still at so many people that are still online. We do appreciate you. We do appreciate you coming into Moment to Remember or in Jamaicans.com. Jamaicans.com Jamaicans is the host site of this show. This is brought to you by Moment to Remember, but host them Jamaicans.com. You can find Jamaicans.com on Facebook by going www.facebook.com forward slash uh, one of Jamaica. One of Jamaica. I keep <laughs> missing that. Is there any private initiative before we close out, uh, Mayor, that you're doing or you're undertaking outside of Mayor Mar? Just uh, something that you're doing on your own, or it's still just strictly business at Mayor? Well, no, no. Um, you know, um, yeah, those who follow me on social media knows my affection for um, Jamaica, my parents' um, uh, place of birth. Um, I and my family and my siblings in um, recognition and honor of our late parents, Hubert and Delcy Messam. We, we um, instituted a scholarship at Churches Teachers College in oh. Mandeville, Jamaica, where we, nice. Um, nice. Where we support. Um, they need, uh, say, just say that again, let's look straight at that camera safety again, because people there were like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's so, what's yes. initiative again? Yeah, so uh, my siblings, I have um, four, uh, two brothers, two older sisters, and myself and our families, we uh, personally donate to, we started a scholarship at Churches Teachers College in Mandeville, Jamaica. And we're doing our part to ensure that um, the young children of Jamaica are taught by very awesome. well educated teachers. So it's uh, my parents' home, home, home parish, and uh, we want to ensure that um, no matter what we're doing here in the United States, we're never forgetting back home our roots, um, which allowed us to be where we are here today. Awesome, folks. The, 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 in conclusion, without re-preaching <laughs> the, the message, it is intentional. We need to be intentional. Intentional in terms of how we support our own business, our, our own community. Understand it's a community, and it's even in a marriage. If you think about it, the husband is from a different culture or different background. If you see the same culture, same background, um, same different upbringing, so forth. But you have to merge, and then you have kids with different disposition. I think the same thing applies to our black folks. No matter how different we are, we're still one family, and we need to get rid of the isms and forget that divide we need to come together one and this is a con uh, i promise you lamir messam says this is a conversation that will continue folks we thank you for uh for, for for being with us we thank you for staying online we still have like 78 people still online at this time uh please uh feel free to like and to share this information has to go out to other folks so like and share, and let's continue the conversation on, uh, some other time. This is Luke Valentine and the team here at Moment to Remember to uh, saying we appreciate you. Thanks for joining. Please see us next week. God bless.